flags. Every nation has one. Some are rectangles, some are squares, and some are Nepals. Some, like in Scandinavia, have common symbols like crosses. And some, like nations in Europe, have similar colours, except for Lithuania, who apparently didn't get the memo. Yet one colour you won't see very often on any of the flags in the world is purple. And in fact, only two modern flags have the colour in them. Which raises the obvious question, why? Why are purple flags so rare? As many of you will know, the colour purple was the colour of royalty and was historically associated with Roman emperors. The reason for this was that purple dye was, to put it mildly, very, very expensive. There was one dye in particular, Tyrian dye, which was especially coveted due to its deep colour. So flags have been around for a very long time and their use as battle standards can be traced back thousands of years to India, China and the Roman Empire. However, it was during the medieval period in Europe that banners, saints, flags and royal standards slowly took root as becoming an easily identifiable symbol of nations. This one isn't a joke, by the way, the French royal coat of arms was just a field of white, I'm not being mean. Anyway, since Europe is where flags morphed into national symbols, we'll focus on there. You would expect that kings, given their constant need to one-up each other, would have picked purple for their colours, but again, I need to stress this, it was extremely expensive. So, with one exception, none of the older European states ever made use of purple as a national colour because then they'd have less money to spend on wars. One group that made great use of the colour purple was the papacy, and cardinals wore purple robes. Now, Europeans had been trying to make their own purple dye for centuries by simply dyeing red cloth blue, but the results were mixed. The best they could do was this purple, which was then promptly adopted by the Kingdom of Castile and Leon for their flag. As time went on, Europe's kingdoms became nations and the national symbols became entrenched. Most of these nations then became empires and so their own limited range of flags dominated most of the world's heraldry until the 19th century. But what about when these empires collapsed? What about the new nations formed from them? Well, for the nations which broke away from the Spanish Empire, or say the United States of America, purple was still extremely expensive at this point. In fact, it wasn't until the 1850s that a synthetic purple dye was created, and thus only nations created after that would likely have a purple flag. Now, it's important to remember that purple's use by the papacy and royalty coloured people's opinions of it. When you look at the nations which broke away from the world's imperial powers, most of them were republics and many of them weren't Catholic, and so for them, purple was tainted. However, there was one notable exception in history, Spain, who after the overthrow of its monarchy in 1931 adopted this amazing flag which you will notice, big ol' purple stripe. Now in Spain, red and yellow were associated with the Kingdom of Aragon and purple with Castile and Leon, which is why it was added to the flag. And after the Spanish Republic was Francoed, its flag returned to this and purple, due to its lack of history in flags and its association with the Catholic Church and monarchies, never took hold as a major colour for flags. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my Patreon supporters James Bizanet, Colin Castleman, Danny Maloney, Marvin Cassell, Rob Waterhouse, John B. Gaze, Mo, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, Gareth Turner, Mr. Show, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Phil De Oink Oink, David Silverman, Izzy, Winston Kaywood, Maggie Pakskowski, Lexi Schwinn, Spencer Lightfoot, Kelly Moneymaker, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle and Anthony Beckett.